Coming up, we'll talk about the possibility of a young former women's champion stepping away from the WWE and going over the latest rumors surrounding the mystery behind some superstars disappearance in recent weeks. Starting off with the former women's champion that could be retiring from the ring sooner than expected, this superstar in question is Kyrie Sane. Kyrie first signed with WWE back in 2017. She appeared on the NXT brand and had a lot of success straight from the start. She even held the NXT Women's Championship at one point. Holding the NXT Women's title is a big accomplishment. There is some huge main roster talent such as Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, and other women that have never held the NXT title, so it's quite the accomplishment. Kyrie had a bright future ahead of her on the main roster the second she won that NXT title. Kyrie would then be called up to the main roster and formed a tag team with Asuka. Together, they also saw a lot of success and even held the tag team titles. They were also managed by Paige at one point until they realized they had no longer needed Paige and decided to turn heel on her during Raw. However, things started to get a little bumpy for Kyrie Sane towards the end of 2019. She suffered that huge concussion during the end of the year that we talked about before. It was the match where Becky Lynch noticed Kyrie was hurt and protected her during that TLC match. That was a really scary moment for Kyrie and caused a few weeks of action before she slowly made her return back to the ring. Then fast forward a few months after that and Kyrie was dealing with several injuries due to her matches with Nia Jax. Kyrie hasn't been seen since the entire Steel Steps incident with Nia Jax, but the latest reports about Kyrie are quite concerning. Reports claim that we could see a very early retirement from Kyrie Sane. It's nothing injury related or a forced retirement. It just looks like that's the direction she could be taking herself in and was always her plan for her retirement. Kyrie is currently 31 years old. She'll be 32 this September. So that's still really young, especially for a wrestler. That's the prime of your career. So for her to step away is a bit shocking. But it is understandable if she was to do this. This is something that Undertaker even touched on before. Some athletes like retiring early before they get hurt or their bodies start breaking down. Like Undertaker said, no athlete wants to be remembered for having a horrible last match or a horrible last game in other sports, where they just look so out of place and not themselves. You want the fans to remember you at your best, at your prime. So that's another theory on why some athletes decide to retire early. But no clue if that's Kyrie's intentions. It was reported that Kyrie signed a three-year deal back in 2017, meaning that if she hasn't signed any extensions of any sort, then her deal will be expiring sometime this year or early next year. Reports claim that Kyrie's plan has always been to finish out her WWE contract, returning to Japan for one last year, and then retire early after that. That was always the plan that she laid out for herself. A lot of fans are wondering if that's what's going on right now, right before our eyes. Kyrie has reportedly gone home to Japan to spend some time with her husband, and everyone doesn't seem to have any real idea on if she'll be back in WWE or will her contract expire while she's still in Japan. Everything is just completely up in the air right now. WWE apparently wanted Kyrie Sane to play a big role in Asuka's SummerSlam storyline before being written off of TV and going back home to Japan. But the injury from the Nia Jax match destroyed those rumor plans. Kyrie responded to one of Asuka's recent tweets with a smiling emoji, and Asuka responded by saying, Where are you? Come on, come on. So it looks like Asuka definitely wants her tag team partner back as well. But no one really knows what Kyrie is going to do next. Has she wrestled her last WWE match or will she come back to finish out her contract? It looks like she will make her final decision during this time at home. Let us know your thoughts on this situation and what you think Kyrie Sane will do. This is a great time to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A large amount of our viewers still aren't subscribed, so click that subscribe button if you enjoy what you see. Let's get back into it. So now we have another update regarding the Performance Center outbreak. It feels like we've been talking about this topic every day, but that's just because there's so much news and rumors concerning this issue. Reports are claiming that more WWE superstars 
have in fact tested positive for the virus. Of course, due to WWE's rule of forbidding superstars to comment on their result, we won't really know who else is affected by this outbreak in the company. However, fans and reporters are still speculating about some of the superstars that have now missed two consecutive tapings. If a big star is missing multiple tapings, it leads to a lot of concern about what's happening with them. Two of the biggest superstars that are now front and center of the speculation is Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. Remember, earlier in the same week that Renee tested positive, she was standing right next to Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles in the middle of the ring on SmackDown. Definitely close contact. So you hear about Renee's test result, then go back and watch that segment, and it's a bit concerning. All the WWE superstars were surrounding the ring, but the only ones extremely close to Renee Young was AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. There's been no confirmed news concerning AJ and Daniel Bryan. The only information that we all have is that the taping right after the first outbreak week, AJ did return a week later, so he seems okay. However, AJ and Daniel Bryan weren't the only superstars missing. There was quite a few superstars missing from SmackDown over the last few weeks. Some have speculated that this might have been the reason why WWE aired the entire Boneyard match on SmackDown. With the commercials and everything else in between, the Boneyard match ate up about 40 to 50 minutes of SmackDown's airtime. That's nearly half of the entire show. So many fans are wondering, was the Boneyard match just used as filler because they were missing so many SmackDown superstars? That's how I read the situation. Airing the Boneyard match took a lot of pressure out of WWE for that edition of SmackDown because all they had to do was come up with an hour of content since the Undertaker match ate up the other hour. So airing that match definitely made life easier for WWE. But what happens from this point forward? you're not always going to have a 40-minute long match to air, so it'll be interesting to see how WWE works around the large amount of absences. No one knows what's going on with these missing superstars. It could be that they're being sent home as a precaution to self-quarantine themselves after working so closely with Renee Young, and others that tested positive, or maybe they're just deciding to sit out on their own. No one knows for sure. AJ did appear on the July 3rd edition of SmackDown, so that's a good sign for all those fans that were worried about him. But there are a lot of missing superstars that still aren't around. New reports claim that WWE is making a lot of changes to contain this spread. One of these changes that made the tapings more safe was splitting up recording days for Raw and SmackDown. In weeks past, it was said that Raw and SmackDown were being recorded on the same day for up to 10 to 12 hours at once. That was obviously a bit unsafe because the backstage area was flooded with talent from both Raw and SmackDown. You had your entire roster backstage along with all the other WWE employees, so that backstage area was obviously a bit overcrowded. If one positive testing star was at one of those tapings, then you're risking a huge outbreak, so WWE has now split the days up. The Raw roster tapes their shows one day and leaves, then SmackDown comes in the next day and tapes their shows. This keeps them separate and lowers the number of people in the building at a time. This lowers the risk, it has less people backstage at a time, and reduces the interaction between all the superstars. However, the reports claim that the writers still have to come to both tapings. Remember that after the removal of Paul Heyman from the creative team, WWE combined all of the Raw and SmackDown writers, so they're required to be at all the tapings. These writers will also have to interact with both the Raw and SmackDown rosters, so the risk might be higher than others. Reports claim that there is now a strict mandatory mask rule backstage as well. All superstars and other employees are required to wear a mask backstage, and you will be fined if you're caught without a face mask. So that's definitely another good step for WWE. They went from no masks allowed to mandatory face masks for everyone in under a week. So that's quite the big change in a short amount of time, but it was the right change. Apparently things are looking a bit safer since WWE has been making all these changes, but since they never shut the tapings fully down, you always gotta wonder if it is still being spread within the Performance Center. There's still a lot of talent missing from both Raw and SmackDown, and a lot could be going on there. Some superstars might have tested positive, while others could be out just as a precaution. 
We don't know much at the moment, but the next few tapings and who's there could tell us a lot. What are your thoughts on Kyrie Sane's rumored early retirement? And how do you feel about the changes WWE is making to make the tapings more safe? Do you think WWE is doing the right thing with all the changes to their procedures? Let us know your thoughts on these issues. Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys. 